what is up you guys welcome or welcome back to the channel it's your girl Shanice Alicia and by the looks of things by the title you guys know we're about to hop into the last and most vital part of this three-part series on how to create a YouTube channel you guys know the past two parts of this series has been jammed packed with a lot of good information on how to start your channel and what you need to do to grow your channel now we're going to hop into what are you doing in camera to create seamless videos and help yourself do half of the work when it comes down to transferring this onto your computer and creating your content so i do want to go through a recap briefly before we hop into the meat and potatoes of today's video but before we do that i want you guys to go ahead and give this video a thumbs up make sure you comment down below especially if you are part of the game and don't forget to hit that red subscribe button baby and tap the bell so you never miss another video upload from me because the girl is hitting 100k this year and i don't want anybody telling me how underrated i was when you catch me down the road at a mill so without further ado we're gonna go ahead and hop right into things as you guys know your girl made a good list that way i can stay on topic hit every single thing that you guys need that way you can move on in your journey of becoming a successful content creator here on this platform so number one in our recap you already created your YouTube channel now you're going through the motions of creating that vibe creating that aesthetic but I want you to keep these very things in mind your banner thumbnails and end screens matter all of it plays a part in your consistency and it creates the vibe that your viewers are always going to want to come back and see you want to make sure that you're keeping your titles your fonts and your tags consistent youtube has a built in preference where you can set everything up for every single video that you upload your description boxes are important you want to make sure that your titles match your description and they match your tags use keywords to keep the consistency going that way when anyone is searching for you or they're looking for key words you got it right there and it's just a no brainer you're going down the list now Number two, create that schedule. You want to hold yourself accountable and also create the excitement for your audience. Give them something to look forward to every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or every Tuesday and Thursday, or on the weekend only. That way you can make sure that you stay on top of your task and you can also create a list of the things that you want to create content for and you can stay within the means without stressing yourself out, getting overwhelmed, having creator's block, and not being motivated to continue creating content for your channel another thing that comes in handy with creating a schedule is filming in batches when you have a good day to film with great lighting and you can sit down and knock out a few videos at a time do so that way you will always have content that you can go and grab from and you don't have to really overwork your brain and stress yourself out because you already have something in the archive that you can go edit and then post on your schedule just in case you get behind at any point lastly in this bullet is your algorithm you want to make sure that you're staying very relevant very searchable you're coming up in the recommended videos that your viewers are going to automatically click on and want to know a little bit more about and that also goes hand in hand with of course those thumbnails also the aesthetic on your channel and the fonts that you're using to draw that attention so viewers are clicking on your videos. Now, moving on to number three. I can't stress this enough, and if I'm going to be extremely transparent with you guys, this is where your girl failed when it came to starting a channel and hitting the ground running. Be authentic. You have to be authentic. The first 15 seconds of your video are the most important seconds of the entire thing. You want to have extremely good, upbeat, positive energy. That way people are interested to keep watching. It doesn't matter how many clicks you get on a video. What matters is your watch time minutes. You want your viewers to come and watch a video from the beginning 
all the way down to your end screen and that's period you don't want people clicking out of your video so you have to give them something interesting to watch also in the realms of being authentic you need to make every video better than your last that should be the goal be in competition with yourself it doesn't matter what anybody else around you is doing as long as you know this video will be better than the next video i'm bringing new ideas here there and down the line you're always going to continue growing and progressing on your own and you can look back at your very first videos and know i have come a long way and that is simple motivation within itself to just keep pushing and lastly with being authentic is the remix strategy a lot of youtubers talk about it here and if you guys are unfamiliar with what that means it's simple as this it's already been done before somebody beat you to the punch but how can you do it put a twist on it and make it your own how can you bring that authenticity to that topic to that subject to that hairstyle to that beauty look that makes your viewers or anybody else who comes to your channel want to say hmm this is interesting i've never seen it done like that before let me subscribe to this person because nine times out of ten when people come to your channel for the first time they're not subscribing they're just watching to see what you have to offer and youtube will bring you up in these suggested videos but it's your duty to make sure that you keep them coming back and wanting more and more now this moves on to our fourth point in this recap and that's call to actions are you guys familiar with those it's simple every single video you want to remind your viewers of what is the expectation of them like comment subscribe make sure you tap the bell so you get notifications every single time I post and share this with a friend that's the only way that you're going to continue growing your audience so if you have a 30 minute video you need to put that like in there at least three times you also need to remind them to subscribe in the beginning in the middle and at the end and also it needs to be in your description simple as that another point when it comes to this is interacting with your audience if you don't listen to nothing else that your girl says today hear me when I say this will set you apart from some of their favorite content creators who have grown to magnitudes where it's almost impossible to react comment and just respond to every single thing that they are posting so you want to just always make sure that you're remaining relatable in every single way possible moving on to number five in this recap be receptive towards feedback once you've created a name for yourself be receptive to what your audience has to say because they're the reason that you've grown past one to ten to a hundred subscribers so you want to branch out now is the time to invite your audience in and just take suggestions they're gonna let you know what they want to see based upon what you've already given them now you can just keep flourishing and growing and giving the folks what they want so they can tell more folks about you and your channel and why everyone should come and join your pool of supporters now moving on to number six of this recap and it was one of the very first sips of tea that I gave you guys in part one of this series Series. I hope you caught on though and listen to me when I say this the type of equipment you're using to start does not matter did you guys get that as you see I film on my phone and the two cameras that I've invested in and you won't know the difference but I'll tell you what will make a difference that sound quality your image quality also what type of lighting you're giving your folks like y'all when they say the angle matters it really and truthfully does so a few pro tips that i'll just tell you because this makes a difference as to whether a viewer is going to stay in your video for 30 seconds or an hour 
clean off your cameras you guys it's so simple to take a micro fiber cloth and just wipe down the surface of the lens that you're using from night to day it makes a difference also a very important thing is knowing where your microphone is and not hovering over it a lot of times we do get comfortable when holding our phones a certain way also holding the camera where it's most comfortable to you and we muffle the speaker of the video so you want to make sure that you're very cognizant of doing things like that when you're filming it's very easy to purchase a tripod that way it's a no-brainer and you're allowed to film without even thinking that hard about it now in the same breath when it comes to your lighting natural light will always be the best especially for starting off so you want to go against the sun instead of going with it does that make sense so your light should always be shining behind your camera not in your view of the camera because if you can sit down and edit it and you know it's not good quality, then you can also bet your bottom dollar that people are going to think the same. So as you're trying to grow your channel, if your clicks, which are your views, aren't matching your watch time minutes, it's time to take a deeper look as to what you're presenting to your audience and how you can improve that with the equipment that you already have. Another important tip when it comes to this is never be afraid to keep learning we all are going to be a master at our craft but with the world that we live in things are constantly advancing things are constantly changing and you want to keep up with the times your method may not always be the best method there's always something that you can learn when it comes to creating content always a hack always a trick and always something that can make you just a little bit better at what you do so invite yourself to keep learning I myself in doing this entire process have learned so much about where I want to grow my channel to because I'm still on the road to 100k and there's so much more that I could be doing to create a better experience here on my channel and I will keep YouTubing googling and just researching how to utilize the equipment that I do have how to upgrade my phone and firmwares on my camera to make my quality even better and you should too all of the software that you're using there's a trick and a method to the madness discover it and never stop learning now that we've recapped and gotten all of the logistics out of the way how's about we hop into the sponsor for today's video because this right here is going to be very helpful in the next stage when we talk about in-camera filming transitions and things to do to make editing that much easier because it's not the editing it's all about the person behind the camera you so i'd like to thank skillshare for sponsoring today's video let's talk about a few things they can help you achieve while continuing your journey here on youtube skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journeys Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics included illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. Skillshare classes include a combination of video lessons and a class project. These classes are fit to your schedule and skill level. Members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule mark here for instance is showing his class today on how to create a one minute video with everything that you have at home it's super simple to DIY videos like this and he takes you through the very beginning in camera on down to editing and creating your final masterpiece the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership so you can explore your creativity. 
helpful, right? And what I love about Skillshare is just the simple fact that those are creators like you and I who have taken their skills to a whole nother level to create courses just so we can benefit and grow and grow and grow. Even if it's just not on a videography type of skill, they have photography, also art, design, drawing, planners, just you name it, it's there on the hub. So I'll leave all my details here and down below in the description box. That way you can sign up and take advantage of everything that Skillshare has to offer. So I ain't gonna hold y'all much longer. Let's go ahead and hop into the reason you clicked on part three of this series. In camera, what we doing, how we doing, where we doing it, and where is it going to take us. Now, with any device that you choose to use, whether it be a phone or a camera, you need to know this. Stability matters. If you don't have a steady hand tripods they can range anywhere from ten dollars on up to a hundred dollars and more but it's a great investment as you get started and you can use these items to hold your phone or your cameras and most times tripods do come with phone attachments so it's super simple to connect your phone to the tripod that way you can just set it up and film with no worries so I'm just going to put this one on here and if you guys didn't know, I am a Joby affiliate and I will also leave the link so that you can shop all of their tripods and receive some discounts at checkout. So you see how that works? Super simple right here. It's already set up and this one actually extends. So if you need to put your phone on there, your phone has a case on it, it's a little bulky, no worries there. They're all different. They come in different sizes, shapes, whatever the case may be. They have different features to lock them in and it's as simple as boom boom the way that youtubers do film is horizontal this vertical way is going to create a lot of crop for you so you don't necessarily want to do this you want to keep your tripod this way horizontal that way when you're filming you have a full screen full frame of any object that you're going to catch of course being yourself in most instances also you can always place your camera onto the tripod itself and do the exact same same thing you would do with your phone luckily for this it already comes in the orientation that you need it which is horizontal or landscape and it gives you a good frame for whatever it is you're filming now having a steady hand is the make or break of good quality as well you don't want anything to be too shaky or creating a lot of friction so I always pick two points to hold the device and that's either right here at the top of it and at the bottom of my tripod that way I'm creating that stability and as I move it around I keep it very close and tight to my body and if I do have to extend it it's only to extend one and then come backwards that's it I don't do a whole lot of flips and tricks because you have to think what your viewer is gonna see if it's too much motion if it's moving too fast they're not really able to get a good gist of what it is you want to show them so you do want to give yourself a good motion you can always speed up or slow it down as you're editing another good trick especially when it comes to the phone is using your back camera not your front camera I know I know everybody wants to have that viewfinder where you can see yourself as you're filming because you want to make sure that you're good your back camera quality is going to be much better than your front camera I don't know what it is I can't really explain it I can't give you the specs and all of the details down behind it but try filming on that back camera and the front camera in the exact same lighting with the exact same everything and you tell me which one looks better also you'll notice on a lot of cameras especially in the upgraded cameras the microphone is actually right there so your sound quality from the back of the camera actually turns out a whole lot better and and these are just pro tips from me using the phone as well I did do one video where I told you guys I was filming off my phone and I got so many comments on what type of phone you got girl cuz that quality is crisp it's the back so when I talk about lighting this is what I mean as you see the Sun is shining here on me if I were to turn around and get the Sun shining from any other angle I'll show you guys exactly what it's going to look like 
So here I am sitting in the exact same room with the exact same camera settings as I have right here and look at the quality. Look at the quality of this image. This is what I mean when I say film against the sun instead of filming with it. You see how it made that much of a difference and you see how much you want to click out of this video? So that's just a little tip of how your lighting is going to change when you're not cognizant of where your light is coming from. Now, if you do invest in studio lighting and you are using things to help improve the image quality, you want to remember that it's not natural. So it is going to give a harsh reflector as to where the light is shining from, especially for us ladies who have oily skin and we're filming with a ring light. You want to make sure that you do have a hooded light on top of you that way the light is shining down as the light is coming from one angle and another or this front angle right here it will make that much of a difference and it's also going to prevent the shadow that will be created behind you and or on a backdrop so as you're becoming better and better more fluent in creating content you want to start giving your audience b-roll footage or time lapses if you you have the provisions to do so. Now, when I say B-roll, I'm simply referring to the alternative footage that your audience will see intercut from the main real-time shot. So for instance, if I'm sitting here and I'm talking about the functionalities of the camera, I can be showing you it as my voice is going somewhat like a voiceover, or if I'm doing a vlog or some type of lifestyle content, I can be showing you guys the next step leading up to everything that I was saying. Creators who do hair and beauty videos also use B-roll footage to give a different look, a different angle, just more excitement to the film versus it just being a sit down video talking and boring you halfway to death. Now on to in-camera transitions. They're a lot easier than they sound and it also comes with being that creator behind the camera because you're consistently thinking as you're filming how you're going to edit this video and you just want to keep in mind what you want your viewers to see a lot of times in my vlogs I do the cover of the lens creating a blackout and automatically when it opens back up I'll be in another scene another good tip to do is your movements as you know you're about to stop the camera right here you just move it to the side and that way when you open the camera again you're back here moving to the side showing something else a a lot of times too I use objects to close out one scene to the other so I'll be moving past an object and as my lens is opening on the other side we're opening to another scene with the same type of lighting whether you're panning up or you're panning down or you're panning to a side you want to make sure that you keep your lighting consistent for the next transition that you'll be doing most times in your software you do have the ability to blur things out and just switch from screen to screen but you just want to kind of make it more seamless and not too edited of a final piece now lastly to wrap this all up let's talk about the camera settings it's very hard to give you the exact settings that people are using in camera because a lot of it changes for what you want it to do for instance when I do sit down videos I have more controlled lighting I don't have to worry about flipping my lighting to being more exposed or underexposed. I can just have it set here because I know that the Sun is shining I know what time it sets and I know what I need to bring and if I'm also going to be shadowing and showing you guys anything I know how to bring it in and bring it into focus as well but when you're on the go when you're in motion when you're vlogging or when when you're changing from scene to scene that makes the settings vary even in your phone you can go right in and you can choose whether or not you want it to film in HD 1080p or if you want to move to 4k or if you want to do slow-mo you're creating a time lapse you're creating a portrait and the list goes on you just really need to play around with it there's no perfect setting it's all about 
theory. So you guys, that wraps it up for today's video. I hope it was extremely helpful. I hope it has motivated you to get started on your channel, revamp that channel, start back up, whatever the case may be. Every single thing that I listed in this video has helped me tremendously along the way and it's made a difference in the following that I have gained over these years. Now, it's all theory. There's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just case by case and what works out for you best as an individual and a content creator. Just try to jot down as many notes and strategies as you have and just do it. Most times we second guess ourselves and we overthink things to the point where we back out of doing it at all. But the motto for this year is just get it done. What you think matters really doesn't. It's just the art of learning to be better than what you were at first. And that's it. That is all. So if you guys did like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Comment down below. Don't forget to check the description box for all of the helpful tools that will take you further in your journey here on YouTube and as a creator. As always, I love you guys so much. If you're not a part of the gang, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and tap the bell so you never miss another Shanice Alicia upload. I do look forward to doing a lot more sit down videos. If you guys have any ideas for another series that I should start up, please make sure you leave them down below. Even if you want me to expand a little bit, maybe start a YouTube course in the future. In the future, not right now. Let me know down below. If this has helped you in any way, I would love to hear your story. You can send it over to my DM on Instagram or you can leave it down below in the comment section as well. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.